In this week's episode of Make It With Calvin, we're answering S. Wilson's question that comes from the original, pretty much, Why Bottle Laser Cutter video. And he asks, would love to see some videos on using the machine. Well, that's a really good question. So let me take you through the workflow process of actually going from a drawn part file to getting the parts cut and, you know, little tips and tricks along the way. So let's dive into it. Alright, so for the sake of time in this video, I'm not going to be discussing how I draw everything. I am going to say straight up, I am using Adobe Illustrator. So if you are not using Illustrator, you can skip ahead in the video. I'll have a timestamp in the description down below. And you can dive right into how I go about actually cutting the parts out using K40 Whisperer. That is if you're using Inkscape to draw, color, all that stuff. But let me talk about the Illustrator side of things really quick because there are some very specific things that need to be done to get things to work properly. So in Adobe Illustrator, you need to set the values of your black, which is very simple. Anything that's not the specific color will work. And your blue for your vector engraving and your red for your vector cutting. Now in K40 Whisperer, in short, Black is raster engraving, which is just the head moving back and forth, fires the laser, gray for engraving images. Not very efficient for doing things like my buildings with a lot of just very simple vertical lines on them. Now, if you want to do vector engraving, which is effectively vector cutting just a whole heck of a lot faster, you need a very specific blue value. And if you want to do vector cutting, which is tracing the design out and cutting it effectively, you need to use a very specific red value. Now I've overlaid on the screen the values that I'm using for blue as CMYK values and red as CMYK as that's kind of what Illustrator defaults to when I would import the DXF and then go from there or draw specifically in the program as well. So once all that is done, you now need to export the files in a very specific way as well. In short, Illustrator uses some funky SVG units per inch relative to all the other programs that are out there, and that causes scaling issues. And when you're doing something like the building that needs to be a very, very specific size, so the windows and doors and all that stuff fit, this can be a major headache. Now, all that aside, getting it to export the right size is actually not very difficult. Evil Mad Scientist did a full article on it. I'm just going to do an abbreviated version with the export settings that I'm using that work fine for me. But I do highly recommend checking out their article on it. It's very useful if you're having problems with that. So now that we have the files exported the right way and the units are the right size, I can now take those files from Illustrator and dump them into K40 Whisperer. Now, K40 Whisperer is a really nice piece of open source software that I discovered a long time ago with Ashley, back when we had the K40 together. And Scorch, if you're watching this, dude, that program is awesome. It might not be perfect in all aspects, but for being a free, very easy to use open source program, I can't complain. It's well worth checking out and it works great with a stock machine. I know some people like to use other programs, but in my case, I'm trying to stick with as basic as possible and it works really well. So initially when I've imported files that were done in Illustrator, I would generally have K40 Whisperer ask me which program it was done in, either two versions of Inkscape, which had slightly different units for SVG files and Illustrator. And because I exported them from Illustrator, I dumped them in there under the Illustrator format. And I've had zero problems when it came to scaling because thankfully the file exported the right size. Now a crude dummy check, if you will, is to check the units at the bottom against the units of your artboard. And you'll find out very quickly if the settings are right or not. It's a quick way to make sure, oh yes, this is the right size because I have cut things out that were too tiny and that was kind of depressing. So once we get all that done, it's time to actually burn some parts. Now, in my case, a client of mine actually needed some parts made for an upcoming project. And 
I figured, hey, what better way to end out the video than showing the K40 in action? Now, I'm sorry I'm not showing the power settings on the screen, but every material is going to be different. I can tell you that I was running at 12 power on the tube for my vector cutting at 10 millimeters a second, and I was running at about 5 power on the tube and 20 millimeters a second on the engraving on the wood, and I believe I'd upped it to 40 millimeters a second for the cardboard for vector cutting, because nothing sucks more than accidentally vector, I mean vector engraving, nothing sucks more than trying to vector engrave a piece of cardboard and you effectively vector cut it because it's cardboard. So I'll conclude the video with that. And as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. But I figured this was a really good video to do explaining the workflow process for this. And if you are gonna be sending files to somebody who has a K40 and uses K40 Whisperer, hopefully this is helpful. I've already had one client of mine ask me what the settings were for files and I gave him that and I figured, you know, hopefully it'll work. So hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you here next time on Make It With Calvin.